they're surprisingly active for how cold the water is. It was, I think, 34 degrees when I got out. You got out this morning? I had yeah, to get out exactly. a beanie and a little jacket. Yeah, man. yeah, exactly. So, uh, But most of the koi, they're moving around a little bit, but these asagis want to jump even in the cold water, huh? Yeah, right? They're annoyed. So, uh, looking at these goshikis, I was thinking about how uh, now is probably the coolest time to be around for koi development. Um, I think uh, late 80s, early 90s, mid 90s even, it's a pretty exciting time. Uh, Japan had a lot of money, so people were spending crazy money on koi, and that was pretty exciting. But right now, we have so many young koi breeders out there who are um, dedicated to making uh, beautiful koi and changing the varieties that I think, I think in the next like 10, 15 years, we're gonna see some really awesome, awesome koi being produced. And it might be because, because of its, the fallout from that sort of Japanese economic bubble, right? where a lot of people were breeding koi you know, because there's, you know, there's lots of money in it, right? Right. And now we're starting to see these, this younger generation who are breeding koi because... Because they love it, exactly. not, be, not because of the money. Exactly. And you can see it in this fish right here. Yeah. You can see how it's so refined. So, what I really want to show you guys is on the goshiki where we get that five colors. So obviously, if we look at the sides of the koi, we can see the, the white body. It's a white fish when it's born. And then uh, the other obvious color is the red. So it has a nice kohaku pattern. Um, and then after that, you can see where, where like the asagi bloodline comes in because at the, the base of each scale is, is that black or gray or blue color, um, depending on where it's at in its development. And uh, <clears throat> it's, it's absolutely beautiful as you start to focus in on, on these scales here. Uh, I could get lost and watch, like, watch those scales like all day long because the, the core of the scale, the, the base of the scale seems to be that nice deep black and it fades in from sort of that blue to gray color. I may have mentioned this before, but it, this koi always reminds me of, of burning embers. So you have these like a uh, uh, charcoal that's on fire, and that's yeah, that beautiful red just glowing around, kind of pulsating. And then in the center, you have that sort of ash and coal together. I don't think we've talked about that on this no. series. No, uh, that's epic. I love yeah. that. Yeah. So since we have these guys together, it's a great way to show you the difference between uh, the a refined old style goshiki or a, a koro goshiki and a new style goshiki. This uh, new style, you can see it's, it's much more light in color and the reticulation is um, uh, very, very um, light. They're like light scale embellishments of black. Where in koro goshiki, uh, as this koi develops, this is gonna be this deep, deep black uh, throughout, throughout the body. So it will be sort of a uniformed color where here we're going to see that sort of a soggy like reticulation throughout throughout the body, and that's the main difference between an old style goshiki and a new style goshiki. It's interesting because this one almost looks a soggy like the you know, right the soggy type reticulation. Yeah. Sure, and I can't say that I've ever seen that in um, in the other goshiki that I've seen over the years, but this looks like you know, the the, the color of the black is very. Mm -hmm. Very typical of this fish, right? Right. It's almost like a gray black. Yeah. I like how they both have a little bit on their nose. It's just really pretty. Yeah, and this is a, the perfect time for a uh, customer to own the fish too, because uh, because these guys are going to change a lot within the next year or two. Uh, both we're talking about this developing more and more black, right. and so that's that's an important part to um, being an owner of koi. You know, you're, you're getting this art piece from uh, this this breeder. Right. And then you get to interact with it. You get to watch it change. You get to watch that art finish and develop. Well, interesting that you say that. I think this is really cool because just like you say, you're, you're watching that art piece finish at your home in mm -hmm. your pond. You're also talking about how the development of koi are changing with the new breeders and stuff. And what they're producing today is going to be slightly different than what they're producing in, say, five or, or ten years from now. Right. And you're going to be able to say, hey, look, this is a piece that I got at the very beginning curve of 
of oh, what's happening, right? Exactly, yeah. Much like a, a brilliant tattoo artist, their, their style changes in five years. Yeah, exactly. So if you want to get an add-on to a piece that you did five years ago, it's going to look different. Definitely. Right? So I... Um, I think that's a really fun and exciting part of being an owner, too. Sure. I know a couple of hobbyists out there that uh, they collect old school bloodlines. So uh, they'll find, like, a Jinbei is a real famous Sanke bloodline, and uh, he's not really producing koi anymore, but there are still some really small breeders that have that sort of Jinbei bloodline. And so they're, like, hunting down fish that have right. that genetics, because, like, oh, this is kind of what a koi looked like in the 70s, for example. It's really, it's really cool. Right. Well, when you get that depth about it, I think it really it helps to distinguish, you know, the value in in keeping koi and the beauty of it. So, yeah, sure. well, this is a great koi discussion. I'm glad I had an opportunity to get these guys in a bowl before they move on to someone's collection. Yeah, they're both one's headed to Vegas, the other one's going out to San Diego. So, well, that's great. Well, let's end this koi discussions right here, sure. and uh, let's maybe get on to another topic. But uh, I'll look forward to doing many more Goshike videos yeah, with you. Yeah, of course, man. Awesome, man. Thanks. Yeah, see ya.